Hello everyone, and welcome to a game called Snow White Ashes. This is where you find someone in the woods and you don't know who he is, but maybe you'll fall in love with him or something. Let's go ahead and start the game, shall we? There's two endings, we'll find them both. I walk through an ashen wood alone. Frozen earth crunches, crick crack beneath my feet. Fat, blurry snowflakes fall I by, aglow with the moon's bright light. I could never truly be lost, not on a night like this. When she shines so round and full, gazing down from the winter sky above. Still, I'd best look like I am. Okay. I meander through ashen trails, between the birches, silver girths stri stripped with dark, around the trunks of pines that breach the sky, bots buried with snow, bouts rather. I walk between the shadows, slip through pools of light and dark, as if I have somewhere to be, but no knowledge of what path might take me to it. All the while I wrap myself in a cape of red wool, pulling its rough, splint fabric, and fine needlework tight about my shoulders. My hands I rest inside thick sheepskin gloves. Even with the snow and the mountain air in my face, the thrill of the hunt keeps the bite of cold at bay. My heart beats with an unfamiliar feeling, a pounding, jittering rhythm. I shiver with excitement. I hope whatever's out there makes mistakes. Mistakes it for fear. But probably not. I sink my hands deep into the pockets of my skirts, running my glove fingers along the edge of the deadly sharpened point I carry. In a strange way, it feels more totem than weapon. I suppose I seek no ordinary prey. I almost smile, like my quarry. How strange to think that I, too, might hide my fangs. And so I wander on, trembling like a newborn lamb. I wonder how the beast might appear. Would it call out to me in a, a voice nectar sweet, promising shelter? Would it lure me to its mountain lair, whispering honeyed words as it led me to a place where no screams can echo? Would it stalk me patiently, waiting for the moment I collapse, cold, exhausted, in the snow? As I wander and wonder, I find myself growing impatient, the cause of my shaking turning from thrill to frost. When would it appear? Would it appear? Am I not the image of the perfect prey? I'm running out of time. Who are you trying to appeal to? Uh, I want to ask. No such vexations are a luxury. I can indulge in it. I cannot rush this. I need my mind clear. Surely there is some way of drawing more its attention to me until it can no longer look away. You're just asking for this, aren't you? I fill my pockets for a small, sharp knife I'd use to whittle my weapon to its deadly point. What? simpler way to entice a beast than with a iron freshly drawn. But did I need to go so far? Perhaps it was not flesh it was hungry for. Perhaps I simply need to call out to it. I can draw my blood or I can sing. Oh my goodness. I'll call out to it. And so I do. I call out to it. I close my eyes and take a deep breath, then I raise my voice to song. My unfamiliar tongue savors each word of a well-worn tune. The Mist Queen, wrapped in fog, how softly does she glow, go. With a silver veil around her head, 
that shines like fallen snow. I shiver now to look at her in moonshine lit a glow. But before I can continue to the second verse, a sudden sound echoes in the distance I turn. No longer do I hear the wind for the trees, the hooting of an owl, or the scurrying of a squirrel. It is as if the world has gone completely silent and still, save for a pair of carefully approaching footsteps. It is seconds longer before I see it, a pinprick of light in the distance, a blur of white like the snow swirling around me. Gradually it comes closer, blinking, flickering bright. All the while I stay still, so still like my heart has forgotten its beat. Closer it draws, closer still, until finally I make out its face, framed in white. Lock eyes with it. With him. This weary traveler. I can't move or turn away, I can't even breathe. The eye stares back at me with a deep green. Are you lost? He says, and like a spell broken, I shake out out of my daze, the wind and the sound of the night roaring in my ears. His voice cuts through it all, clear as a bell. Are you cold? The figure wears the skin of a man, a skin so impossibly fair it reminds me of the broken statue of an angel I once saw in a ruined castle, the surface of its marble pallor color as cold as ice when I brushed it with my fingertips. How flawlessly smooth, how otherworldly that lonely thing left behind in a place of broken granite and brittle stone. I wonder if it, if the being before me is as cold to the touch. He dresses from head to toe in white, shrouded in white, from his fine wool coat to his fur-trimmed cape and soft leather gloves. Even his hair cascades of gentle curls that frame his face, shine silver, a radiant halo lit from the glow of the lantern he carried in his hand. The other he extends to me. Are you lost? He asks again. I won't hurt you. I'll see you to safety, I promise. No, I came out here looking for a beast, rather, so I wasn't planning to be safe in the beginning. The sound of his voice makes all the worry in the world melt away. It is so musical, so warm and calling like liquid honey. It takes all my will not to take his hand and offer all at once. I'm not lost, I stay stubborn, stubbornly, rather. Then pray tell, why are you alone here at night? I could ask you the same, stranger. I declare boldly, though I leave a trace of hesitation in my voice, a tremble as I shiver in the cold. I am an innocent, vulnerable thing, hiding my fears. But you can smell them, taste them, can't you? I am simply a traveler passing through. I never thought I'd come across another soul here. But then I heard your song, and what a lovely voice you have. Demoiselle. Demoiselle? Definitely mispronounce that. <laughs> his smile is as warm as sunlight, gentle, disarming, and kind. Were I naive, I'd take his, take his answer without question. But I am not. Do you not fear the woods? The wolves? I've wandered through places far more dangerous than this. The trees almost seem peaceful, don't they? The branches bend in the wind as the snow swirls softly. You have courage indeed, good traveler. And what of you? Have you a place to shelter? The nearest village is hours away. I... 
I trail off with a quiver, a tone of reluctancy. I am a trembling lamb looking for her shepherd. Please come to me. I'm sojourning not far from here. You can share my fire and stay the night in safety. I suppose I can't refuse such a kind offer. I reply, letting relief wash over my words. Show me your face. Show me your true face, rather. Show me your fangs. Then please, good sir, lead the way. With his free hand, he offers me his arm. I hesitate. Such closeness would avail me to my weapon, but just as easily put me at his mercy. How quickly could he strike back with the strength? What strength could he stop me if I failed? I will walk just fine. I am very independent. I can walk just fine, I stammer. As you wish, he says, withdrawing his arm. No disappointment colors his tone ever even and warm. Gently he beckons me towards the path he approached from. The wind swirls around us as we walk, my footsteps following the imprints of his boots of the fallen snow. His form from behind is radiant, almost aglow with silver moonlight. The strands of his hair shimmer as he walks. His cape, snow white, trails behind him like a shroud. He stops every now and then to check that I still follow. Each time he gives me a nod or a small smile of encouragement. Every stare from the deep green eye, my heart thuds in my chest. I grip my sharpened point tightly within my pockets. The motion is not suspicious. It is a cold night. Ah, a cold I so rarely feel. Soaking through the thin wool of my cape and shawl. How warm his cloak and furs look, yet never does the breath from his lips fog the night air. I'm not sure he breathes at all. I pull my wools tighter around my shoulders. It does not seem he will strike me yet. I must stay alert, ready for wherever or whatever he lures me to. Might I ask your name, he says, after we have walked some steps from the clearing. I have worn names like they were ribbons in my hair, dozens of names in all colors and shapes. To give one away now would be a frivolous thing, but names, even false ones, create familiarity, bonds. Would it be wiser to keep my cards close? My heart closed. Oh, there's a lot of options for only two. You may. Of course. My name is not Mitchell. Eh, it's Mew. Mew, he repeats, savoring each syllable, the one syllable that he savored. That's lovely. Thank you. I came up with it myself. He sounds like he means it. Like there's a heart that still beats beneath his borrowed skin, that flutters at the sight of goodness and beauty, that thrums at the sound of a maiden's name. And yours, I wonder. Gabriel, he smiles. Like the old angels, I murmur. If I were naive, I would wonder if he is old enough to remember the angels from the days long before the mist descended, before any gods and their icons who watched from above fled, as the undead and unsated plunged the earth into pestilence and death and rot. Wow, we, we're going all over the... There's a lot to the story that that's in the background these people are in. I would wonder, had he ever plucked an apple from the branches of Elysium, uh, tasted its sweet, apple flesh, uh, 
but I know better. My parents were fond of the old tales, both of them for different reasons, he said with a wistful smile. What reasons? My father valued the strength of divinity. My mother valued the tales of virtue. A name can be a gift, and I treasure mine as I treasure their memory. You must miss them. I do, he replies softly. I wait, but he does not continue. It's not enough. Anymore. Show me what lies beneath your skin. Show me the beast that you are. Now that you ask something of me, I must say, I believe it's only fair I ask you a question in turn. Very well, then ask away. Oh. I'd like to know the purpose of your visit, please. You said you were a traveler, but why here? Why these mountains, this forest? I often come to the mountains to hunt. I love the air here, the pristine wilderness and the snow. Of course, you would, you wild thing. But sir, your clothes are too fine for a mere huntsman, you see. You look fit to be, well, if not a prince, then a knight of a queen's guard, at least. The queen? There is no queen that rules these lands, unless if you speak of the Mist Queen. I mean, I guess there is actually a, a queen that rules the land. The Mist Queen. A figure shrouded in fog and mystery like her name. Whispered around campfires and village squares and sober tones, and drunken ones in hall and reverence, but most often in fear. I have seen her knights before marching in the wilds, their pyres burning on the hillside for days. Do you believe that she has lived since the dawn of time, that she bathes in the blood of virgins to keep her beauty wow the, there was like some undead breakout and now there's the miss queen and her army yeah? I see not for a moment I laugh you speak as if you know her and we talk about the politics of this universe hmm? would you be afraid if I did, if I were the servant of the queen. I... Oh boy. I am never afraid, no. I would... I would call you a spinner of tall tales, good sir. I can sincerely believe she is a... I mean, scarcely believe. That's a huge difference there. That she is an immortal, after all. Um, who can remember a time before the mist fell? Who can say whether the undying still walk the surf? Um, yet, if you were only a servant merely a pawn, I would think her unfit to be queen of anything at all. How poor her sense of virtue is. You believe me to be virtuous? Well, here you are, helping a poor lost damsel in the snow, I left. It's only human to help others in need. All right, but you're a beast in my eyes. I shake my head. Some would disagree. Some would seek an advantage over others. That is human nature, my hunter. In any case, there is something gentle about you. I cannot think to place you among her scores of blood-soaked knights. He looks at me for a long time. I wonder if I have said too much. You're a strange girl. A strange, sweet girl. A girl? I'm well past twenty summers, but do not think of how... Uh, do not think to ask how many gentle hunter 
I shall not. Don't ask about my age. Have you a family, then? I did, though I was a stranger to them at first. They welcomed me in their home and became just like family to me. I love them very much. But those days are gone now. He gives me a look of sympathy. I'm so sorry. I'm like you, I. Once had a wife and son, but plague took them from me. I'm sorry for your loss. I consider what to say next. I'm gonna go through all this again, just to pick the opposite of what I picked. Okay, we'll ask about his past. Have you always been a hunter? I no, in fact, for much of my life, I hated the thought of harming anything, be it man or animal. My tale is truly a dull one. Demo Oisile. We have nothing but time. All right, yeah, we. D you're right. We have nothing but time. I wait for him to continue as we walk. My father was a knight at arms, but he died without land or fortune. I was very young, and so my mother was left to raise me alone in the humble countryside town. I knew from an early age I didn't want to live a mar marital life like my father, so I, oh, I apprenticed to a healer, then studied martial life. Mar merit. Anyway, then studied medicine as a young man. Eventually, I returned to that small town met and married a shepherd, shepherdess with the loveliest voice in the world, shepherdess, and spent my days treating coughs and fevers, making pul poultices and tisanes, mending wounds, until the plague I finished. The plague of undead that wiped out the population, except the population is still there in places. He is silent for some time. It was a horrible, cruel thing to call it a sickness, would have been to call the ocean a mere pool. It did not spare any of its victims, it turned healthy, smiling folk into dying husk within days. I tried. I tried to save him, and I magically did not catch it myself. You did all you could. I can't imagine how awful it must have been. I lost myself for a time, and after that I found I could not return to the healing arts. I could not mend another bone, touch another skin without feeling the rot beneath my fingertips. That's terrible. I'm sorry. Even the wind is silent as we walk, the crunching of our footsteps, the only sound in the night. It's a relief when he turns the conversation away. I've spoken enough of unpleasant matters. Tell me something about you. What do you enjoy? Ah. Uh. Well, you heard my song, so I do enjoy that. <laughs> I love songs. When I sing, I never truly feel alone. And you have a talent for it indeed. He looks about to speak, but hesitates. Are you often lonely? I'm quite used to it. Solitude is like an old friend to me now. Sometimes I wonder, is it better to be alone, or to spend your life with someone you cannot give your heart to? Both of those sound lonely. A wise man would seek a third route, but what if you had no other option? What if fate had tied you together like roots intertwined? Hmm. Well... I'd rather not be alone, so this is my personal pick. I would learn to grow beside them. I cannot imagine running away in solitude forever, even though I'm quite comfortable with it. 
I would think it just as lonely for the other person. Would you abandon them? Leave them to their burdens? Not even try to overcome the fate that you shared? Forgive me. I've burdened us with heavy topics again. No, you haven't. This is getting interesting now. We're talking about relationships. But I thank you for your insights. Of course, gentle hunter. I search my mind for another question. Another distraction, when suddenly a howl, long and low, cuts through the night. Wolves. Without thinking, I step closer to him, only realizing what I've done when he reaches out and takes a hold of my hand. He pulls me close towards him, throws his cloak over my shoulders. His hold on my arm is firm, but not tight. Stay close to me. This will mask your scent, he says, pulling the cloak tighter around us. His voice is soft and mel melodious. Melodious? The song of a shepherd coaxing a lamb. From the maw of one beast to another. This fear, I feel, isn't mine. It isn't mine. But it runs beneath my skin like a rapid coursing river. My mind cannot quell the instincts of a living heart. But I must overcome it. I keep alert for any sudden movement from him, but he makes none. It's alright to be frightened, it's only natural, but you won't come to harm, I promise. The same way a mouse is safe from the, sh uh, from the shrike when the eagle is near. We stay that way, standing still in the shadows of the pines as the howls echo through the night, billow on by the wind. I keep alert for yellow eyes peering from the darkness, but none appear. Perhaps the wolves, too, scent him, and know better than to strike. Out of instinct, I feel myself starting to hum, a habit I never grew from, but when I no longer need it to calm my resting heart. I wish the, pound in my, the pounding in my chest would sit ill and turn to stone within its cage. Go on, he says, gentle, coaxing. Sing. Let your worries wash away. Oh, we're gonna sing again. I take a deep breath. And then I sing. Misty-eyed, her eyes were bright. Her hands were misty, too. Her skin was pale, as white as milk. Dark hair, a wet with dew. Her gown was not made of silk, but willow, branch, and yew. By the river's bend, how still she stood, as pale shallow shadows bloomed. How black that night, save silvery light, of distant star and moon. By the time I had finished the verse, the howls have stopped, the only voice on the wind is the whisper of thin branches whistling through the woods. I quickly let go of his hand. Too close. Not yet. Not here. It's not far ahead now. Can you walk the rest of the way? I'm fine. Onward I follow as he leads me through the trees. The cottage comes into view as we turn the bend, almost as if conjured from the mist itself. It is a small, quaint thing, a lonely, strange thing to see, placed there like it was plucked from a fairy story. Its wooden walls are aged but sturdy, its sloping roof coated in fresh snow. It should be the home of a living, breathing woodsman, not a creature of the night. I had never guessed you would hide yourself in a place like this. It's beautiful, I say. It's the only place in the world I truly feel safe. Its heavy door creaks open as he leads me inside. The cottage is small with short square windows and low walls, but appears well kept, a solitary home. Strings of dried herbs and fruit meant horse tail, apples, 
hang from the ceiling. A table that end stood sit on the center, stacked with clay pots and metal bowls. A stone hearf cut covers one wall. A narrow bed lined with fur sits against the other. A bookshelf filled with dozens or so well-worn tomes stands. I clicked through it. The scent of incense, sweet and heady, fills my nose as he lights the kindling of the hearth. The embers cast his skin aglow, his silver curls and pallid features paint it softly in warm light. He unfastens his long snow white cloak and tosses it tosses it onto the stool. Carefully, slowly, I slip my hands free from my sheepskin gloves. I feel his gaze, his green eye watching me as I unravel my shawl from my pale throat. And my fingers, still numb from the cold, fumble with the clasp on my cape. May I? He asks, stepping towards me. I nod, shaking. His hands, even gloved, are, are dealt deft, deft, swift, a surgeon's hands. They free my shoulders of the deep wool, red wool, set the fabric aside on a narrow bed. His gloved hands linger near my collar. I do not move an inch. I scarcely breathe. Show me your true self. Show me who you are, what you are, rather. He brushes my cheek, a whisper of a touch, like he is afraid to hold me, like I am a statue that could crumble away beneath his fingers. May I? He asks again, barely, barely audible. Yes, I whispered back. He brushes a lock of my dark hair behind my ear, then gently, slowly brings his lips to my skin. They are so soft. His touch is like the snow that lands on my face, carried by the winter wind, cold but light, feather light, on my cheek, gentle, far too gentle. I don't want this delicate tenderness from him. I am not a fragile thing. But I am willing to accept your offer. I fold my hands around his neck, feeling the downy softness of his hair as I slip my fingers through its ashen strands. He wraps me in his arms, holds me tightly, kisses my hair, trails his lips down my neck. I shiver, I tremble against him as his gloved hands run through my tresses, down my spine, filling the laces of my bodice. Bodice? Bodice? Mm. He pushes me gently into the furs, turns me to my side, as his hand slowly reaches down my skirt, tracing my thigh. Found you. He says, pulling the wooden stake from my petticoats. I yelp, struggling to break free of his grip, and he holds me effortlessly as I thrash atop the furs. I cry as he pulls a long red ribbon from my hair, and with it binds my wrist behind me. Oh, things are just starting up, I guess. I squirm and twist until I'm facing him. A beam from the window casts his face with cold, ashen moonlight as I watch him toss the useless piece of wood into the harp. Shadows from the roaring flame flicker over his pallid features as the wood blackens and burns. I should have known you were a beast inside, though I always known that from the minute I met you too, well, but you've only proved it now. There is no hunger in that deep green eye, no warmth, no desire, only white, cold fury. I believe it's my turn to ask, he says softly, bending towards my ear. What exactly are you doing in these woods, Mew? End of the demo. Well, I, I was looking for some beast and I found some dude. And, and 
He has a wolf's and sheep's clothing. It's more than the wa warning. It's like that one song. All right, let's go back. Let's try to get the other ending. There is two. All right, let's draw my blood. I draw the short knife from the sheath and roll up my sleeve. Without hesitation, I press the blade against the back of my forearm, watching as a thin line of crimson blossoms against my flesh. The pain that comes is a sensation I'd long forgotten. I almost cry out in surprise. Hastily, I take a long ribbon from my air and wrap it tightly around the fresh wound. Red against red, it entwines around my arm, like the bark around the birch's trunk, like the skin of an apple peeled away with a knife. Oh. A sudden sound echoes from the distance, shaking me from the thoughts I turn. Oh, well, so he doesn't have the ribbon to wrap my hands this time, I see. Oh. No longer do I hear the wind through the trees, the hooting of an owl or scurrying of a squirrel. Ah, uh, I think I can do this. Are you hurt? A little bit, I hurt myself. The figure wears the skin of a man. A skin so impossibly fair it reminds me of a bro- Right. Why did it stop here? Who are you? I ask. Simply a traveler passing through. I, I did say you were not lost. I'm not lost last time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm simply the traveler passing through, soft, gentle, unfrightening. If I were naive, I would take his answer without question at all. But I am not. Here, alone in the woods at night, I could ask the same of you, Demoselle. Mm. Why ever did you wander here? I was searching for something. Whatever it might be, you've come far. The nearest village is hours away. Have you a place for shelter tonight? No, I say as I quiver, as I fill my voice with trembling of a lost, vulnerable thing. Lead me away. You have nothing to fear and everything to gain. Uh, please come with me, I'm sojourning not far from here. You can share my fire and stay the night in safety. Can never refuse such kind offers you make. Lead the way. She, she knows. I hesitate, but I take his arm anyway. I reach out for his outstretched hand. My fingers linger on his gloved ones for only a moment before he links his arm through mine, sweeping his cloak around the both of us in one elegant motion. Ooh, we get some new art here? I cannot help but gasp. Forgive me if I startled you. I thought you'd be warmer this way. I'm fine, I stammer, digging my other arm deep in my pockets, gripping my weapon tight. His wool cloak and warm furs around my shoulder does keep away the cold, but I feel no warmth from him, no blush across his pallid cheeks, not one breath from his lips fogging in the night air. He smells of incense and pine and faintly but metallic tang of iron. I wonder if I made a mistake. My heart hammers as I walk beside him. It's beat an unfamiliar drumming in my chest. Thankfully, he slows his stride to match mine. I take a deep breath and keep myself steady, staying alert as he leads me onwards through the trees. It does not seem he will strike me here. I must be patient. I will wait. Oh, you're gonna ask my name, but I'm not gonna give it. Nah. You may not, and neither will I ask of yours. No, sir. Two strangers sharing a fire for a night, then parting ways. I'd rather keep you oh, a story in my heart, a tale I remember far beyond today, than some so ordinary as Gwilliam Arter. Neither of those are my name. And who says we must part after this, or that we'll never meet again? If we do meet once more, if fate spins it so, then I would ask you your name. Would you not allow me to guess? Are you secretly a fairy who spins straw into gold? Demisol. 
I s fairly certain if I were not so guarded, I would blush. Thankfully, my cheeks are already numb from the cold. You sly, cunning thing. I'll give you three guesses, then, to divert us as we walk. But even should you be correct, I'm afraid I have no fairy gold to reward you with. You'll never guess me. The knowledge alone won't be prize enough, he smiles almost mischie mischievously. He thinks for a moment. Is it Mitchell? It is not. Am I close? I will not say, but a pe peculiar choice. An angel's name. Ah, that's the name it gave me, Mitchell. I thought you looked like one from a distance, a figure standing in the mist, one that couldn't be real. Only from a distance. Much more so up close, he smiles, em emerald eye twinkling. He pauses again to think. Could it be Rhea? From an angel to a goddess, I know you are what you are. Wait, I know you for what you are now, sir. A wicked flatterer. Am I a wick am I wicked if I only relay the truth? I'll stop now. What's your third guess? He goes silent again, casting his gaze to the night sky. Is your name Celine? Oh, I can lie and say it is. How do you guess my name? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? It is. Are you secretly a fairy prince? How did you guess? Well, when I look at the moon, you thought to compare me to its radiance. I thought how serene you look, despite being lost in the cold, as if you knew I would come find you. He gives me a warm smile, but indeed, you are radiant. Would you allow me to tell you mine? I suppose I have no other reward to grant you. He smiles a full, genuine smile. You are the one as radiant as the moon. My name is Gabriel, of course. Like the old angels. Yes. And then the mist descended. But I know better. Yes. I wonder if giving him my name... It's not enough and I need more. But you made me work for your answer, he replies. So, yeah, true. And you agreed to it, did you not? Very well, then ask away. Oh, I ask him for the question. About his clothes, why not? Go fancy. Your clothes, I've never seen anything like them. Why I wear nothing but white in the snow? I often come to the mountains to hunt. My cloak protects against the cold, of course. I suppose it lets me go unseen. Unseen by your victims. But sir, your clothes are, are too fine for a mere huntsman. Yeah, they look too good, man. Oh yeah, oh no, what's this one for? There's no way to go back. Hmm. Yeah, th there's the yes, there's the no, and I forgot which one I picked last time. I think yes, I picked last time. Or maybe no. Oh, no, I picked yes. And this is why you save. Oh, story changed so much. Fine, I'll go with it. A strange, bold girl. Yes. Well, I'm old. Ask about his family, why not? How did you meet your wife? I wasn't always a hunter. Once I was a young doctor in a small countryside town. She was my first patient. She injured her leg trying to rescue a lost sheep and was so embarrassed she'd rather un unkind to me while I treated her. 
Oh, she was unkind to you. Uh. She warmed to me eventually, and I grew to love her stubbornness. A pained fl look flashes beneath his emerald eye. It hurts me more than I expected to hear him speak of her in those words with that tenderness. Why did I ask? I'm sorry that you lost her, I say weakly. Did you know of this person? He does not reply for some time. I miss her dearly. I miss everyone from that life. But it was a long time ago now. Even the wind is silent as we walk. The crunching of our footsteps, the only sound in the night. It's a relief when he turns the conversation away. I'm fond of needlework, rather. I'm skilled with the needle, if I do say so myself. Your clothing? Did you make these? I did. I embroidered them as well. I feel his gaze run over the moons and flowers, stitched into my clothes, and feel a sudden warmth creep through my skin to be the object of the stare. It truly is lovely work. I feel I could live a dozen lifetimes and never hope to match your skill. I laugh. You don't need lifetimes for it. It only takes patience and a willingness to persist, even if you accidentally stab yourself countless times. What would you do if you had lifetimes? If you could walk the earth without fear of death or aging? Wow. I would learn- oh, wow. The, the, everything took off into a whole different direction. Even the conversation. I enjoyed this. I would learn all that I could. I'd gain all the knowledge I could, then share it with all, that all people could live in peace, that the countless concerns that mire us throughout the time could be ended. A noble but impossible dream that any one person could end all tragedies, solve all obstacles, mediate every conflict. I would find others who shared that dream, and with them build the world I desire, and start my cult following. Um. But you, as the holder of that knowledge and desire, would stand alone, a new god risen above your followers. And how would you rule your subjects? Forgive me, I burden us with heavy- No, 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 I like this. Um. Thank you for your insight. Okay, I clutch his arm this time. I did not realize I'd gripped him so tightly. I am calm. I should be calm. But the fear that I feel isn't mine. It runs beneath my skin. Mine cannot quell the instincts of a living heart. The howls grow louder and louder. And closer, I can feel them ringing in my ears. Your scent is too strong, I hear him murmur. He searches through his cult for something, a small pouch, then pours its contents over the lantern. Uh, the flame burns brighter as a thick, earthy scent fills the air. It smells of ash and smoke, iron and dust. Uh, this way, he says, leading me by the arm. We come into a large pine, its ancient trunk, at least three grown men wide. With a firm but not ungentle motion, he presses me against his truck, sweeping its cloak around us. I feel the rough bark on my back through the wool of my cape, feel his arms around my shoulders, holding me tight. It takes all my will not to struggle, not to scream. So right, he says, Melodia is soothing, a shepherd calling to a lamb. This will hide your scent, listen to my voice. Hold on just a little longer. This close, I could hear his heartbeat beneath his chest. If only he had been one. Had one. I could burn, earn beneath his arms. If only they were not so cold. Cold to the bone. We stand there for what felt like eternity before the house grows silent. And the one only voice left in the wind is the whisper of the trees. I break free of him as soon as he lets me go, shaking. Too close. Not yet. Not here. Forgive me. It's not far ahead now. Can you walk the rest of the way? 
I'm fine, I say, steadying myself, fighting the quiver in my voice. Onward I follow as he leads me through the trees. Alright, here it comes. He pushes me gently into the furs, turns me onto my stomach as he parts my hair. Found you, my queen. I yelp as he pulls my hair sharply back from my head. Tears beat in my eyes as his hand presses against my skull. He holds me still as I thrash beneath him, traces of his fingertips that marked on my skin I've forgotten lay at the base of my neck. The crooked crescent moon that I carved into my flesh with a sharp iron knife. Might I humbly ask, as your loyal consort, he whispers softly in my ear. The fire crackles and roars, casting flickering shadows around us, but I feel nothing but ice run through my veins. There is no hunger in his voice, no warmth, no desire, only white, cold fury. Did you think you could fool me, Selene? Yes, I can. So I, I went from victim to queen, and we're still being attacked. So, wonder how that's gonna gonna turn out in the full story whenever it comes out. Might play it, maybe. It seems interesting. I would love to, actually. Snow White Ashes. Hope you guys enjoyed that thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video hey goodbye mm -hmm.